Please remain standing for the invocation led by the Reverend Tanis Kalisnik, Student Life Academic Advisor. Reverend Kalisnik will be followed by the Reverend Stan Mackay, who will provide a blessing upon this ceremony and the graduates. So any minan, so any minan. Giver of life, we give thanks this day for this gathering in this era of truth and reconciliation. We give thanks for the diversity of those who are honored this day. We give thanks for the sacredness of the land, Treaty One territory, and the homeland of the Metis Nation. We ask for your presence. We come this day with thanksgiving and celebration of life. Eusei. When I look upon this gathering, these graduates represent hope. I think we can all agree that we are living through times where this world of ours needs signs of hope. UW graduates, you hold knowledge in a world that needs fresh insights and wisdom. You have skill sets that include being able to listen to each other with respect and integrity. Today we ask God to bless this gathering. Together we are here to celebrate your achievements, your community of family, friends, UW professors, and support staff have been a part of your journey. We collectively pause and give thanks and honor you for your hard work and determination to reach these goals. At the same time, we acknowledge that this is also a start of a new chapter full of uncertainties, opportunities, and transitions. May God's blessings surround you as you continue to embrace the dance between science and art, nature's mysteries and ways. May you discern and uphold ethics and ensure positive regard for all in a complex world. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. Before we begin, I would like to welcome in our guests who have just arrived. Please be patient as they find their seats. It is now my pleasure to welcome to the podium Dr. Annette Trimby, President and Vice Chancellor of the University of Winnipeg. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the University of Winnipeg, located on Treaty 1 land in the heart of the Métis Nation. I begin with this significant acknowledgement to recognize the influence the land we are located on, its history, its present, its peoples, and its relationships must have on everything we do. It is my pleasure to welcome you here and to preside over today's ceremony. I'd like to mention that we have made some important changes to our convocation ceremony beginning this year on the advice of our Indigenous Advisory Circle, which are intended to honour Indigenous people and acknowledge that we are on Treaty 1 land. Most of the students in front of me will have some understanding of the significance of this and why it is important. At the beginning of today's ceremony, we were honoured to have Elder Frank Walker, an Indigenous knowledge keeper, performed traditional drumming and singing as our platform party entered. Elder Frank Walker will also be singing an honor song at the end of today's ceremony, which is traditionally used to recognize when an individual or group has accomplished something noteworthy. You may also notice some additions to our graduates regalia. Our Indigenous graduates are now wearing a special stole over their shoulders. This custom stole was created by Destiny Seymour, an Anishinaabe interior designer. Destiny's design is inspired by the repeated and delicate pattern stamping found on local Indigenous pottery, along with colours that reflect the University of Winnipeg. 
In addition, these graduates will be wearing different colored tassels to identify them as Métis, First Nations, or Inuit. Finally, we will have a star blanket on display on Spence Street as our graduates exit the ceremony. Across many Indigenous nations, the foundational understanding is that we are all related. This understanding includes our relationships to all beings everywhere and to all things from the earth to the sky and beyond. The significance of the star blanket extends from this understanding. I invite anyone who would like to take their picture in front of the star blanket to please do so. Mr. Chancellor, distinguished guests, members of the graduating class, families of the graduates, colleagues and friends of the University of Winnipeg, I have the honour to declare open this 113th Convocation of the University of Winnipeg for the conferring of degrees in art. With us today is the Honourable Ian Wisher, Minister of Education and Training. Minister, would you please come forward to address our graduates on behalf of the province of Manitoba. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure to uh, join you this morning. Uh, on behalf of the province of Manitoba and the, my colleagues at the Manitoba Legislature, I am especially honoured to join you. I'd like to begin by acknowledging that we are on the territory of Treaty 1 and the traditional homeland of the Métis Nation. And I especially want to thank Dr. Trimby, Chancellor Silver, and today's award recipients, graduates, and their family and friends for welcoming me to this convocation ceremony. I am honoured to come and celebrate it with you today. I'd like to offer congratulations to all of the graduates of the Faculty of Arts gathered here today. It is particularly inspiring to see dedicated students celebrating their academic achievements through a convocation such as this. I'd also like to extend my congratulations to, Dr., uh, to Ms. Maria Campbell, who receives her honorary Doctor of Letters to degree in recognition of her groundbreaking work as an author and a playwright and a teacher, as well as her lifelong efforts as an advocate for women's and Indigenous rights. The graduates here today have demonstrated their hard work and determination in achieving the requirements of their programs, and I am confident that these, skills and, uh, that these skills and knowledge that they have acquired will serve them well as they move forward in their respective fields. I like to say that you have demonstrated that you have learned how to learn. and That will serve you well through life because life is a, a lifelong learning process. I'd like to take a moment to thank the faculty and other staff at the university for their efforts in preparing these talented and skilled individuals for their new careers and their future studies. And as graduates, I think you too want to take the opportunity to thank your family, your friends, your mentors, um, and also your teachers for the work that they have put in and the, the help that they have given you along the road. Very likely many of you would not be here without all of this help that is received from extended family and friends and I'm sure you want to take this opportunity to express that. To the graduates here today, I wish you success in your future endeavors. I hope you take time to celebrate your hard-earned achievements with your family and friends. This is a special day for you. Take that moment to celebrate that. Thank you very much for the opportunity to join you. Thank you, Minister. It's wonderful to have you here for today's celebration. We are pleased to be joined by a number of distinguished platform guests and I want to introduce them at this time. I would ask that each person stand briefly as I call his or her name and I would request that you hold your applause until I have finished the introductions. In the fourth row, Dr. Brian Keenan, Fellow of the University of Winnipeg, Dr. Michael McIntyre, Fellow of the University of Winnipeg, Ray Karasevich, President and CEO Manitoba Institute of Trades and Technology, Jonathan Duick, Academic Vice President, Canadian Mennonite University, Dr. Dean Peachy, Acting Executive Director, Global College, the Honourable Mar Mary Lou McFedrin, Senator and past Honorary Degree Recipient, Ruth Dickinson, President of the University of Winnipeg Alumni Association. In the third row, Colin Russell, Registrar, 
Dr. Jacqueline Romano, University of Winnipeg Faculty Association President, Bonnie Talbot, Associate Dean of the Collegiate, Jarita Grayeyes, Director of Community Engagement and Learning, Dr. Jamie Cedro, Acting Indigenous Academic Lead, Acting Masters in Development Practice Director and Associate Professor. Dr. Jens Frank, Acting Associate Dean of Science, Dr. John Anchan, Associate Dean of Education, Dr. Jacqueline McLeod Rogers, Acting Associate Dean of Arts. And in the second row, Elder Frank Walker, Reverend Stan Mackay, Elder, Reverend Tanis Kaliznik, Student Life Academic Advisor, Laurel Repsky, Vice President, Human Resources, Mike Emsley, Vice President, Finance and Administration, Dr. Jan Stewart, Acting Dean of Kinesiology, Chris Miniker, Senior Executive Officer, External Engagement, Dr. Doug Goltz, Acting Dean of Science, Dr. Mavis Reimer, Dean of Graduate Studies, Dr. Kenneth McCluskey, Dean of Education, Gabriel Prefontaine, Dean of Library, Dr. Catherine Taylor, Acting Dean of Arts. And in the first row, Dr. Beverly Fair, Professor of Psychology, and Erica and Arnold Rogers Award for Excellence in Research and Scholarship Award winner. Dr. Jane Barter, Associate Professor, Religion and Culture. Dr. Linda Dietrich, Fellowship in United College Candidate. Eric Johnston, Incoming Chair, Board of Regents. The Honorable Ian Wishart, Minister of Education and Advanced Learning. Dr. James Curry, Provost and Vice President Academic. Bob Silver, Chancellor of the University of Winnipeg. Dr. Paul DePasquale, Associate Professor of English. Dr. Colin Goff, Clifford J. Robson Memorial Award for Teaching Excellence Award winner. Janet Walker, Distinguished Alumni Recipient. Dr. John A. Bullman, Chancellor Emeritus, Past Honorary Degree Recipient, and Member of the University of Winnipeg Foundation Board. This is your 113th Convocation Platform Party. I also want to acknowledge the presence of special guests of the Platform Party and members of our Board of Regents who are seated in the audience. Seated in front of me or serving as marshals are members of our faculty whose wisdom, expertise, and generosity of spirit have contributed so much to the personal growth and academic success of our graduates. We are also joined by many members of our staff, administration, and alumni who are here to share in this celebration and who play essential roles in making this university an extraordinary place to discover, achieve, and belong. I would ask you to join me in acknowledging all of these remarkably gifted and dedicated people. The University of Winnipeg is proud to provide a live webcast of the ceremony for all family and friends who are unable to join us in person today. Welcome to those who are viewing the ceremony online. Convocation is a special time in the calendar of the University. It is a time when we gather together to honour our grads, bid them farewell, and celebrate their accomplishments. It is also a wonderful occasion to give honours to members of the University faculty, students and staff who have made significant and worthy contributions to our institution. And it is a time when we award honorary degrees to those who have demonstrated exceptional leadership and unparalleled excellence in their fields, helping to define and shape the principles and values that give meaning to our community. Today, we honor Maria Campbell with an honorary Doctor of Letters. An honorary degree is the highest academic status that can be bestowed on any individual. Those who receive an honorary degree demonstrate dedication and excellence in their field of work and have been nominated for consideration of this title. Unfortunately, due to unforeseen circumstances, Maria was unable to join us today. In her absence, we will confer the honorary degree of letters in absentia. I'll now invite Dr. Paul Di Pasquale, Associate Professor of English and a close friend of Maria's, to present her citation. 
Dr. De Pasquale, would you please come forward? Good morning, graduates, and congratulations to you all. Mr. Chancellor, on behalf of my colleagues in the English department who supported and worked together on this nomination, I have the great honor of introducing Maria Campbell. Here I was going to acknowledge Maria and give her a smile and stuff, but I'm imagining that she's maybe watching from home uh, or that she will at a later time. And Maria will just extend to you our best wishes for a good recovery for you, a speedy, and wish you all our good thoughts. Maria will be awarded with an honorary Doctor of Letters in absentia. Maria Campbell is a distinguished Métis author of the groundbreaking novel Halfbreed, first published in 1973. She's a highly influential author, playwright, teacher, elder, and community worker. In 1973, in the after aftermath of the 1969 White Paper, and inspired by the resurgence of Indigenous voices, Maria published her autobiographical novel Halfbreed. She was one of the first Indigenous women in Canada to write the story of her life. Halfbreed gave full and startling expression to the experience of many as it told the story of a young woman who overcame the impact of racism, sexism, and poverty of settler colonialism in Canada, which included the loss of Métis and Indigenous lands, resources, language, and cultural identity. In this way, Halfbreed is Maria's story, but also the story of the Métis here in Manitoba and on the prairies. Halfbreed began the watershed of Indigenous writing and activism in Canada that continues today. It has had a momentous impact on Canadian public discourse and culture, and it continues to have relevance for the many who read and see their experiences reflected in it. Maria Campbell's liter literary legacy includes numerous works, such as Stories of the Road Allowance People and Riel's People, How the Métis Lived, in addition to several award-winning plays and contributions to theater and film. Throughout her life, Maria has worked and continues to work with elders, community members, political leaders, artists, writers, scholars, and allies to advocate for women's, Métis, and Indigenous rights. First and foremost, she's a community worker and organizer. She's de dedicated to helping both women and youth, and for many years her home was a safe house for both. She's a fluent speaker of Michif, Cree, English, and Salto. She's a strong advocate for the revitalization of indigenous languages. Maria is a person of great humility who would never go on about all her awards and accolades, but she has re received many, including a National Aboriginal Achievement Award, a Canada Council for the Arts Molson Prize. She's been named to the Order of Canada in 2008, 2009, she was here on campus as the Carol Shields Writer in Residence with support from the Louis Riel Institute. Maria devoted an extraordinary amount of time to students, faculty, and community members, giving numerous workshops, readings, and talks. Many still fondly recall her warmth, humor, and generosity. I wish that Maria could be with us today so that we could all hear, learn from, and share in the experience of her abilities as an orator and storyteller. She's an inspiration to those who, like many here, will go out and lead and do good things to help a world that really needs all your ingenuity and care. But I am deeply happy for Maria and for all of us present that we are honoring her many and continuing contributions in a good way. Thank you. At this point, we would normally have our honoree come up to be conferred. 
I had the pleasure of speaking with Maria yesterday and I'm delighted to share that later this year, I will travel with a group of students and some faculty, hopefully Paul, uh, to her home near Batasha, Saskatchewan to present her honorary degree in person. Batash is a special place to hold this ceremony for many reasons. In 1885, it was a site of culminating battle of the Northwest Rebellion, in which Métis forces defended the land against the Canadian government. It was also home to Gabriel Dumont, the influential Métis leader who bravely stood up for the recognition and well-being of Saskatchewan Métis. In fact, Maria now lives in Gabriel's former house. I'm excited to not only meet Maria there, but to learn more about the rich history of the land and its significance for Métis people. Mr. Chancellor, I request that you confer upon Maria Campbell the degree of Honorary Doctor of Letters in absentia for her pioneering and powerful contribution to Métis literature and in recognition of her many talents and how she uses them to forge a better future for her community and country. By virtue of the authority vested in me as Chancellor of the University of Winnipeg, I admit Maria Campbell in absentia to the degree of Doctor of Letters Honoris Causa with all the rights and privileges thereto pertaining. So thank you, Chancellor Silver, and thank you, Dr. Paul Pasquale. Fellowship in United College is awarded to retirees of the University of Winnipeg. Both faculty and staff nominating, nominated by their peers for distinguished service to the university. I would now like to invite Dr. Linda Dietrich forward to be presented by Dr. Jane Barter, Associate Professor, Religion and Culture. <laughs> It is my great honor and my pleasure to um, present this uh, nomination for Dr. Dietrich. Dr. Dietrich is an internationally recognized German studies scholar, researcher, and teacher who served the University of Winnipeg with distinction until her retirement in 2016. She is highly esteemed by her colleagues at all levels of administration for her commitment to the university and to her field of German studies. After joining the University of Winnipeg in 1989, Dr. Dietrich made many significant contributions to administrative service while compiling a substantial record of teaching and scholarship within Canada. Her work stands out as original and innovative. Her literary research brought due recognition to many female German writers. Dr. Dietrich has devoted her career to the University of Winnipeg, improving governance for her colleagues, her department, those in her faculty, and the wider university community. She has held a number of positions with responsibility, leading with civility and integrity, and especially professionalism. Dr. Dietrich served as chair of the Department of Modern Languages and Literatures, acting dean of arts, and acting dean of the library. And perhaps the most indelible mark of her career upon the University of Winnipeg has been her advocacy and support of the University of Winnipeg Library. As chair of the Senate Library Committee for many years, she worked tirelessly on behalf of faculty to provide support and input on matters related to the library and its operations. Understanding the library's importance as a learning commons for students, she advocated strongly for resources to improve its materials, technology, and study spaces. Mr. Chancellor, I request that you confer upon Lin Dr. Linda Dietrich the fellowship in United College for her long-standing commitment and contributions to the University of Winnipeg. By virtue of the authority vested in me as Chancellor of the University of Winnipeg, I grant you, Dr. Linda Dietrich, fellowship in United College with all the rights and privileges thereto pertaining.
Thank you, Dr. Dietrich and Dr. Barter. To recognize their dedication, several prestigious awards are presented to faculty and staff on an annual basis at our spring and autumn convocations. Several of these awards will be presented at a dinner reception this evening. I would now like to call upon Dr. James Curry, Provost and Vice President Academic, to come forward and to publicly acknowledge and congratulate the recipients. Dr. Curry. Thank you, Dr. Trimby. Six members of our university were recognized for outstanding contributions over the past year, uh, two of whom are attending today's ceremony. Uh, award recipients, would you please stand as I call your name? Dr. Colin Goff. I have the pleasure to present Dr. Colin Goff, who is being honored with the Clifford J. Robeson Memorial Award for Teaching Excellence. Throughout Dr. Goff's 27-year teaching career, he has nurtured students, faculty, and visiting lecturers, and is known for creating a warm, lively, and intellectually engaging space where genuine learning flourishes. He has established innovative new courses that reflect current issues, such as animals in society, green justice, and the sociology of genocide. Such innovative courses tap into students' yearning to make a difference in the world by connecting learning goals to social justice issues. His lectures are stimulating and well-prepared, with video clips and guest speakers. To better teach modern policing, Dr. Goff went with RCMP officers on patrol in First Nations communities in northern Manitoba. To understand Aboriginal policing, he reached out to First Nations Elder Art Shoffley, attended sweat lodges, and invited Elder Shoffley to share his knowledge with the students. The two became fast friends. His students describe an atmosphere in which there is always a steady stream of people knocking on Dr. Goff's door, and he always takes the time to assist in a highly professional, compassionate, and respectful manner. For his nearly three decades as a motivated, enthusiastic, upbeat and generous educator and colleague, U Winnipeg is proud to bestow upon Dr. Colin Goff the Clifford J. Robeson Memorial Award for Teaching Excellence. <laughs> Dr. Beverly Fair. I have the pleasure to present Dr. Beverly Fair, who is being honored, honored with the Erica and Arnold Rogers Award for Excellence in Research and Scholarship. Dr. Beverly Fair is a well-regarded professor and mentor who possesses a highly impressive record in scholarship. She is an eminent social psychologist with special expertise in the sub-area of close interpersonal relationships. Her master's thesis was described as extraordinary and launched a highly productive program of research on how emotion prototypes influence friendship and romantic relationships. Her 1996 book, Friendship Processes, won major awards and has defined this area of psychology for more than a decade. In fact, I would say 20 years during the arithmetic. Uh, her current work is on compassionate love with a focus on the role it plays in strengthening relationships in which one partner has a severe chronic illness. She is also conducting research on gender and intimacy and friendships. Dr. Fair's work has been cited nearly 7,000 times, making her one of the most off-cited social psychologists in Canada. She's also received a multitude of awards and honours, including Fellow of the Canadian Psychological Association. Dr. Fair is recognized by her students as an inspiring professor with a cont contagious passion for psychological research, which earned her the Clifford J. Memorial Award for Teaching Excellence from U Winnipeg in 2015. The University of Winnipeg is proud to present Dr. Beverly Fair with the Erica and Arnold Rogers Award for Excellence in Research and Scholarship. Please join me in giving a round of applause to our award winners. Congratulations to you all and thank you for your work and commitment to the University. Thank you, Dr. Curry. We have now come to the part of the program that our graduates and you, who are here to share this special occasion with them, have eagerly been anticipating. The Registrar, Mr. Colin Russell, will present the graduates, and our Chancellor, Mr. Robert Silver, will confer the degrees. 
The parchments will be handed to the graduates by the Acting Dean of Arts, Dr. Catherine Taylor, and the Acting Associate Dean of Arts, Dr. Jacqueline McLeod Rogers. Each graduate will also be presented with a University of Winnipeg alumni pin by Ruth Dickinson, President of the Alumni Association Council. This is a rite of passage, an occasion for jubilation for our graduates and for the friends and family who have helped them on their way. So please feel free to express your admiration of our graduates or any particular graduate as they cross the platform. Mr. Russell and Chancellor Silver, please. Would the graduates from the class of 2018 please rise as their degree is called and remain standing while the other degrees are announced. Master of Arts. Masters of Development Practice. Bachelor of Arts Honours. Bachelor of Arts Four Year. Bachelor of Arts. Mr. Chancellor, on behalf of the Senate, I request you to confer upon these candidates and upon those receiving their degrees in absentia the degree for which they have qualified. By virtue of the authority vested in me as Chancellor of the University of Winnipeg, I admit those present and those receiving degrees in absentia to the degrees for which the prescribed studies have been completed, with all the rights and privileges thereto pertaining. Please shift your cap tassels to the left. Congratulations, you are now graduates of the University of Winnipeg. Please be seated. Mr. Chancellor, I now beg leave to present the, the graduates for congratulations. Receiving the Master of Arts degree, Nicole Marie Amiot. <laughs> Graduate Student of Highest Distinction Award, Natalie Morgan Bartmez. Alexander Douglas Patterson. <laughs> Kent Theodore Zeus. <laughs> Graduate Student of Highest Distinction Award, Jasmine Winter. Now the graduates of the Bachelor of Arts Honors degree, 
Receiving the Gold Medal for Achievement in a Major in Honors Student Designed Major, Lindsay Patricia Allen. <laughs> Jamie Alana Anderson. Carly Rose Begri. Anissa Eve Barnes. Morgan Dawn Beal. Michelle Louise Bedell. <laughs> Alexandria Marie Bonney. <laughs> Janelle Irene Bordaluzzi. Receiving the Gold Medal for Achievement in an Honors Women's and Gender Studies Program and the Stars of Spence Street Award, Jade Elise Willems de Fair. The recipient of the Chancellor's Gold Medal for the Highest Standing in Arts Honors and the Gold Medal for the Honors Classics, Ruth Ann Lynn Dickinson. Emily Danielle Dempster. <laughs> Carlos Felipe Diaz Rey. <laughs> Isadora Drashkovich. Isadora is also receiving the BBA four-year award, and the uh, Gray Stole is for a graduate of Menno Simons College. Matthew Christopher Duick. <laughs> Rebecca Ann Marie Enns. Anthony Robert Lee Ferens. <laughs> Brittany Ford. <laughs> Sierra Allison Amanda Fredborg. Receiving the Gold Medal for Honors International Development Studies, Bryce Haley Gallant. <laughs> Tessa Marie Gauthier. <laughs> Receiving the Baha'i Kahan Singh Naba Prize, Manvinder Gill. Irlanda Gomez Mentado. <laughs> Chelsea Ann Grewer. <laughs> Receiving the Gold Medal for Honors History, Emily Mary Elizabeth Jackson.
Sabrina Maris Janke. <laughs> Drew Dawson Jensen. <laughs> Taylor Aaron Rain Kerluck. Nikolina Kuzmanovic. <laughs> Melissa Eve Langdon. <laughs> Julie Ann Lex. Lauren Jean Lishka. Adam Christopher Lukowski. Alexandra Manzura. Receiving the gold medal in honors English, Rachel Narvi. <laughs> Gustav Nelson. <laughs> Spencer Brian Paddock. Chloe Marine Philippot. <laughs> Shailen Melissa Plett. <laughs> Carly Lauren Rackle. Raven Ashley Rickner. <laughs> Dina Brooke Roback. <laughs> Jamie Jaden Geraldine Sanderson. Amy Nicole Schweiger. <laughs> Joshua Tyler Sido. <laughs> Receiving the gold medal in honors psychology, Keaton William Shabelo. Receiving the gold medal in honor sociology and the Dr. Dan A. Checky Prize for Excellence in Sociology, Dan A. Record Smelsky Ramiliar. <laughs> Nolan Jack Smith. <laughs> Natalie Tristan Smith. Nicole Leslie Emily Stoiko. <laughs> Receiving the gold medal for achievement in honor sociology and the Dr. Dan A. Checky Prize for Excellence in Sociology and the valedictorian for this morning's ceremony, Jillian Elizabeth Xenia Sunderland.
Matthew Jonathan Tellis. Samantha Diana Terrian. Receiving the gold medal in honors criminal justice, Yanja Wilhelmina van de Vietering. Julia Waterer. Raisa Dorothea Florence Watkin. Amber Christine Westra. Receiving the gold medal for honors disability studies, Evan Donald Wickland. Emily Marie Will. Rachel Elizabeth Wilson. And now the recipients of the BA four-year degree, Olamida Ambibola Ajibola. Krupa Jean Anchan. Tyler Horace Andrade. Lizeth Ardila. Ariel Bainan. Marinus Nelson Bird. Taylor Allen. Shane Tannis Bloomfield Wong. The olive colored stole indicates a graduate of a global college program. Lynn Louise Comberbach. Indira Cortez Rojas. Kila Olivia de Pop. Caden Manning Stewart. Daniela Alejandra Dickey. Samuel Maximian Doucette. Danielle Brittany Dunn. Brooke Elizabeth Helen Evans. Denise Ann Abayon Fardo. Joel Robert Ferguson. Yeah. 
Receiving the gold medal in four-year conflict resolution studies, Bryn Charlotte Frolick. Shannon Marguerite Gibson. <laughs> Alice Gainden Zador. <laughs> Haley Hickey. Dara Joel Horovitz. <laughs> Receiving the gold medal in four year human rights, Rachel Louise Howgate. Delaney Jane Hybers. Sarah Jansen. Jessica Kylie Jeb. Ethan Zachary Stewart Crucial. Cassandra Kupfer. Receiving the gold medal for four year criminal justice, Nathalie Marie Lemoyne. Julie May Letkman. <laughs> Megan Michelle Lepke. <laughs> Miranda Lynn Marie Lowe. Madison Octavia McLean. Ami Manzano. Saxon Thomas Robert Miller. who is also receiving the BBA three-year degree. Clariel Pabellan. <laughs> Roselle Banyas Panganiban. <laughs> Raquel Janice Payne. Receiving the gold medal for four-year modern languages and literatures, Renisha Roshan Pauline Pivot. <laughs> Jeremy James Theodore Poclitar. <laughs> Natalie Evelyn Helen Podema. Miriam Senawap. Yes. 
Charity Wasto Sanderson. <laughs> Jamie Madison Sanwald. Dan Savard. Eric Schiffman. Jordan Sidney Sheldon. Darby Ray Stam. <laughs> Katie Waremiak. <laughs> Nikki Lynn Wesselake. Receiving the gold medal in four-year philosophy, David John Weeb. <laughs> Sheena Kirsten Wilson. Asia Winter. Receiving the gold medal in four-year English, Christopher John Wyman. <laughs> Tara Catherine Sabale Yambao. <laughs> Madison Eleanor Nichols Zinkowicz. Teresa Marie Schwager. The recipients of the um, three-year BA degrees, uh, receiving the Interdisciplinary Linguistics Gold Medal, Christina Aquan Dreyer. Vicente Bihasa Almonte Jr. <laughs> Fayez Arhiam. Ahmad Ayokunle Babatunda. <laughs> Kyle Barnes. Jan Baruch. <laughs> Tamir Bezbert. <laughs> Receiving the Mayor's Medal, Rochelle Nicole Baker. Diana May Bartolome. <laughs> Daniel Martinez Basanas. <laughs> Ray 
Randy Elizabeth Bovey. Andrea Roxanne Belfast. Egal Rodriguez Benarash. Holly Ann Bernard. Receiving the gold medal in three year environmental studies and sciences, Tyson Grant Bannatyne. Joel Dominic Babacqua. Rima Elizabeth Baba. Carl Betker. <laughs> Receiving the gold medal in three year indigenous studies, Benese Storm Belanger. <laughs> Jacqueline Patricia Bourgeois. Jessica Susan Brosh. Lisa Marie Bruce. Amanda Gail Bussey. Megan Cable. <laughs> Chelsea Suffocate Capotije. <laughs> Receiving the gold medal for three year East Asian languages and cultures. Samantha Christy Cajato. Michael Robert William Cahill. Riley Bryn Carmichael. Carry on. Mika Ella Erica Carrion. <laughs> Brianne Elaine Christophilos. <laughs> Jarrett Patrick Cole. Milan Christine Cooney. <laughs> Ch 
Zhu Chan Cheng. <laughs> Shannon Lian Cosetti. Michaela Rebecca Crichton. <laughs> Maria Alexa Danica Eve Quaderno. Maria Josele Estampador de Balos. <laughs> Alison Daniluk. <laughs> Rebecca Alexandra de Young. Genesis Jerus de Paula. <laughs> Roberto Ernesto de Paz Hernandez. <laughs> Jesse Austin Lewis de Rockini. Sarah Ayota Riel de la Ronde. <laughs> Caitlin Rose Deppendorf. <laughs> Maria Gabriela Diego. Megan Lee Dupas. <laughs> Olivia Ann Dick. Samantha Early. <laughs> Alida Einerson. <laughs> Claudia Ann Elliott. Kirkland ends. Kimberly Erskine. Abraham Andreas Ayo. <laughs> Adi Faraj. <laughs> Receiving the prize of the Ambassador of Switzerland for French Studies. Vanessa Kimberly Fowlis. <laughs> Ad
Ashley Dawn Friesen. Chantelle Ray Gagnon. Colin Alexander Godry. Tanner Liam Gabriel Goodwin. Anna Green. <laughs> Hashina Hamida Hamida. <laughs> Gabrielle Ann Hayes. Melissa Livia Herrick. Also receiving the BSc three-year degree, Austin Hill. Connor Michael Hink. Chris Michael Hans. <laughs> Keith Richard William Horaska. <laughs> David William Horvath. Kekshin Huang. <laughs> Hazra Batul Jafri. <laughs> Receiving the gold medal in three year psychology, Tamara Jody Louise Jansen. Marnie Nicole Johannesson. Rianne Maria Candia. <laughs> Stephen James Koch. <laughs> Jesslyn Cassandra Colt. Receiving the gold medal for three-year theater and film, Dana Marie Konopelny. <laughs> Kelly Marie Kasuan. <laughs> Darylan Sheila Michelle Kotick.
Julia April Grace Kramer. Alex Martin Kraus. Jimmy Kumar. Kaylee Takara Kusano. Paige Kendra Kutzner. Regina Awate Lako. Justin Franklin Laribe. Sarah Nicole de Lievre. Barry Alexander Lieb. <laughs> Yu Yingji Li. <laughs> Diane Judith Little. Sam Noah Mark Loisel. <laughs> Glenn Douglas Lobby. <laughs> Heavenly Lorna Marie Lundberg. Receiving the gold medal for three-year developmental studies, Ruth Ann Lysecki. Jasmine Leeds Lel Medill. Amar Manning. <laughs> Lisette Leba Marocain Gilani. <laughs> Jennifer Catherine Rose Martin. Cassidy Maria Miller Matthews. Hope McBride. Receiving the gold medal for three year conflict resolution studies, Michaela Brina McNaughton.
Kennedy Taylor Merrill. Brendan Moore. Charlotte Morin Fournier. Beverly Ann Morisso. Andrew Allen John Morish. Gerline Carr Mooker. Patricia Blanche Murdoch. Brianna Elizabeth Murner. Miranda Murphy. Brock Henderson Cliff Monroe. James Scott Nellis. Noble. Brianna Lynn Noble. Receiving the gold medal in three-year religion and culture, Catherine Margaret Obirik. Victoria Oksarek. <laughs> Kirsten Marie Page. <laughs> Evangeline Paul. Melissa Ann Gonzalez Pepompe. Jordan Adam Pearson. Chance Pelocan. Liala Claire Pritchelock. <laughs> Brianna Raylene Petty. <laughs> Colton Bradley Plant. Heidi Danielle Rapp. Okay. Emily Susan Ray.
Zoe Lauren Roberts. Eva Marie Riddell. Charlotte Emily Ross. Emily Victoria Ruiz. Tegan John Satcher. Gurpreet Kaur Saka. <laughs> Joshua Anthony Sarbiewski. <laughs> Brendan Harold Sean. Jessica Blair Schmidtke. <laughs> McKinley Rose Scott. <laughs> Selena Elizabeth Serbinuk. Denise Josephine Silva. Aaron Mackenzie Shea Slater. Receiving the gold medal in three year sociology, Kelly Lynn Slobodian. Laura Star Alesha Smith. Solange Sukram. Sarah Ishbel Staradub. Ashley Nicole Steckley. Myron John Tatarin. Jenny Danielle Tether. Cameron Joseph Templeman. Cassandra Trosco. Jamar MacArthur Farley. Noreen Dawn Thompson Fair. Brett Jordan Tizon. Yeah. 
Maria Antonia Urso. Ryan David Adrian Wall. Mark Wall. Victoria Warwick. Caitlin Danielle Winkler. Jessica Lauren Wold. Christina Elizabeth Wright. Amy Lauren Yakalashek. Jordan Nicole Yankowitz. Adam Frederick Yasinski. Receiving the gold medal for three year political science, Rene Michel James Alain Yon. And last but not least, a gentleman who started his degree in 1969, David Simmons. Ladies and gentlemen, the graduating class of the Faculty of Arts, June 2018. I have to say the room feels a little different than it did at 9.30. There's kind of a calm. I, I want to thank you, Mr. Chancellor and Mr. Russell, and congratulations once again to the graduating class. We, we have a little more on this program, but I, I have to say, and um, I, I do say it, I tend to repeat myself, but the Chancellor and I have the best seats in the house <laughs> because uh, we get to see your graduates as they prepare to walk up the stairs uh, we get to hear Colin say their name, their name in full, and nobody's even mad at them. <laughs> and we get to see how, for many of them, I mean, some of them walk up and they're smiling already, and others walk up and they're, they're looking a little nervous, a little tenuous, and then as they walk up, somebody hoots, somebody hollers, that's my mom, that's my brother, that's my friend, and we get to see 
their grin, the grin that you're also familiar with. So it's a great honor and a privilege. I would now like to invite Ruth Dickinson, President of the University of Winnipeg Alumni Association, to present the 2018 Distinguished Alumni Award to Janet Walker. Ruth, Janet, will you please come forward? I have the pleasure to present Janet Walker, who is being honored with the Distinguished Alumni Award. Janet completed her Bachelor of Arts degree in English in 1978. True to her love for and commitment to the University of Winnipeg, she has maintained a close connection throughout her life to her alma mater. Active in the University of Winnipeg Students Association, Janet served as a student representative on the University of Winnipeg's Board of Regents. After graduation, she held several positions at the university. Janet's work as University of Winnipeg's Director of Advancement, in collaboration with the university's Chancellor, Board of Regents, and the Council on Post-Secondary Education, was instrumental in creating the University of Winnipeg Foundation and solidifying its early years. She played a key role in the success of a World of Opportunity Capital Campaign, which raised over $135 million for the University of Winnipeg. Janet's experience with the University of Winnipeg's Oral History Centre, working on life story interviews and studies in history and memory, led her to a new career in 2014. She was appointed President and CEO of Canada's National History Society, an organization that promotes the discovery and understanding of our nation's history. The University of Winnipeg Alumni Association is very proud to recognize Janet Walker as this year's recipient of its highest honor, the Distinguished Alumni Award. Dear graduates, today solidifies the dedication and hard work you committed yourself to throughout your educational journey. I would like to congratulate each and every one of you on your accomplishments and welcome you to the University of Winnipeg Alumni Association. The University of Winnipeg is a community that recognizes every student's potential, promotes diversity, ingenuity, cultivates new leaders and leadership, and offers service opportunities on and off campus, and it is innovative in research. As you celebrate, take a moment to reflect upon your own academic achievements, personal growth, and contributions at this institution you have called home for the past few years. Your connection to the University of Winnipeg does not end today, but evolves into a lifelong extension of friendships made, knowledge gained, and memories created. I encourage each of you to stay connected through the University of Winnipeg Alumni Association. Moving forward, I wish you much success. Follow your dreams, inspire those around you, give back to your community, and never forget that the University of Winnipeg is your home, your alma mater. On behalf of the University of Winnipeg Alumni Association, congratulations to the class of 2018. Thank you, Janet, and thank you, Ruth. I would now like to invite the spring 2018 valedictorian, Jillian Sunderland, to the platform. And as she makes her way here, I will tell you about her. Jillian has a passion for equality and social justice with a proven record of academic excellence. At U Winnipeg, Jillian discovered sociology. She has particular interest in exploring the intersecting oppressions of race, gender, and class. During her studies, she found time to volunteer with North Point Douglas 
Women's Center, the Newcomers Employment and Education Development Services, and Inspire Community Outreach. Jillian has earned numerous awards and scholarships, including the 2018 Gold Medal for Achievement in Honors Sociology, the Dr. Dan A. Checky Prize for Excellence, the Clem White Prize in English, and the U Winnipeg Retirees Association Scholarship. This fall, she will attend McMaster University to complete an MA in Sociology. Her future plans include a PhD and the desire to teach and create a more inclusive society. Please join me in welcoming Jillian. Good morning, President Trimby, Chancellor, distinguished guest, fellow graduates, family and friends. It's a pleasure to be speaking to you today. What seems like only a short time ago, we, the class of 2018, walked through these doors hoping to get a bachelor's degree. We are leaving here today with much more. Critical thinking skills, knowledge to help us pursue future goals, tools to navigate through life, and friendships with like-minded individuals hoping for a better world. We entered as eager students and we walk out better people, not measured by the degree conferred on us today, but by all the experiences and interactions that made this possible. Let's not forget that we did not achieve this milestone on our own. Many people contributed to our success. Our family, professors, coaches, and friends who provided invaluable advice, unwavering support, and the right bit of encouragement just when we needed it most. These individuals share in our success and deserve our heartfelt thanks. Graduates, I encourage you to reach out today to the people who have helped you on this incredible journey to express your gratitude. Special thanks must go to our wonderful professors who gave us the invaluable gift of their knowledge. They helped us succeed by guiding us in the right direction, inspiring us to new heights, and making time for us despite busy schedules. They continually urged us to not simply accept what is known, but to engage with it critically, to challenge past research and express our own viewpoints. They have honed our thinking and performance skills, which we will take with us as we go forward. Our appreciation must also extend to the department heads, administration, those governing and setting the tone for this institution, and the support staff who are always there to help us. The UW's stated commitment to excellence is reflected not only in its people, but in its programs, research, community outreach, and the many alumni who've gone on to take up important positions in, in society. Those of us in cap and gown are most fortunate to have been part of an institution and must now serve as its worthy ambassadors. We have been privileged to have experienced an atmosphere of inclusion, warmth, energy, and, and a sense of community that extends beyond the classroom and embraces everyone within. Although we came from different backgrounds and personal challenges, we were united here in a respectful and non-discriminatory learning environment where we could engage equally. I am proud to be graduating from an institution that values diversity and is one of the top universities for Indigenous participation. Today is a special day in our lives, one that we have been eagerly awaiting and will remember forever. For some, this degree is a stepping stone to other academic pursuits, but for others, you are now poised to enter the workplace to make your mark. What we have all gained within this institution will enable us to excel in whatever field or endeavor we choose. Though at times it seemed like we were drowning in a sea of work, had impossible deadlines to meet, and not enough time to spend with friends, we persevered. Because of this, we will take with us an ethic of hard work, the discipline for meeting deadlines, teamwork, the ability to juggle work and personal time, and the capacity to deal with disappointment when we fall short of our expectations. Your testament here today, it, your, your presence here today is a testament to the fact that you overcame many obstacles and achieved your goal. You should all feel a great sense of pride in yourself, just as your family and others are proud of you. You no longer have to doubt whether you're up to the task. You've shown yourself and the world what you're capable of. Now that we are confident of our abilities, each of us can go out and make our contribution to society. I'm certain that what we've learned during our time at UW from our studies, professors, the connections we've made, and our rich and varied experiences will be reflected in the work we do. Like the many UW alumni 
who have achieved great success in their careers. We must move forward with energy, vision, and an action plan for a better future. We must join together to ensure that respect for all people, equal treatment under the law, support of the less fortunate, and tolerance of difference must inform decision making in our institutions and guide our interpersonal relations. Too many people in positions of power today lack integrity and the sound judge judgment needed for difficult times. They sow discord and make decisions exacerbating societal ills. But there are many ways we can affect change, and it's up to each and every one of us to decide how we might best contribute. To do nothing makes us complicit in everything wrong in the world today. So we must be mindful that we are fortunate to have obtained educational and other opportunities denied to so many, and thus have a responsibility to use these advantages to serve our community. The world, more than ever, desperately needs fair and forward-thinking leaders who are committed to equality and social justice. Recently, we've seen attacks on the hard-fought equal rights for people of color, women, the LGBTQ community, and other oppressed people. While most of us condemn the racism and xenophobia taking hold around the world, we pay scant attention to the recent escalation of hate speech and violence aimed at minorities in our own backyard. Over the past few years, discriminatory posters have increasingly appeared on Canadian campuses and hate crimes have risen. These are not the only problems Canada faces today. There's still an inequitable distribution of wealth and current leaders have not adequately addressed key social issues such as poverty, an unfair criminal justice system, the rights of First Nations and Métis, inadequate mental health services, and a myriad of other issues. I mention these things not to take away from the joy we are experiencing today, but to drive home that Canada needs a new generation of leaders who have the vision and the passion to look beyond their own personal interests and offer the communities what's needed to ensure that all people are treated with respect and have equal opportunity. It's my hope that some, if not all of us, will be those leaders. The future stands before us and we must endeavor to leave it a better place than when we entered it. But before we trailblaze, let's take time out to celebrate. We deserve it. On that note, I would like to extend my congratulations to you all. Thank you. Thank you, Jillian. I think you represent your classmates well. And I, I think we have in front of us the next generation of leaders. I would like to congratulate everyone that we've celebrated this morning. And I want to thank all of you for choosing to study at the University of Winnipeg and for sharing your gifts with us at this very important time in your lives. So convocation is a time to celebrate a time to look back on your accomplishments with pride and look ahead with an anticipation of what's to come. But it's also a time of uncertainty. And we, when you talk to students today, um, you know, their anxiety is a little different than anxiety in, in past years. So I'd like to confront that for just a moment. There's no denying that the workforce, the world that you're entering is significantly different than the ones your parents entered. The internet has changed the notion of how we find work, who we work for, and when and how we show up for work. And in March, the Royal Bank of Canada released a report stating that 25% of the jobs in Canada will be heavily disrupted by technology in the next decade, and fully half will go through a significant overhaul of the skills required. That's a huge number, especially since Canada's economy is expected to add 2.4 million jobs over the next four years. But here's what else the Royal Bank found. They found the skills most in demand by Canadian employers in our emerging digital economy are critical thinking, coordination, social perceptiveness, active listening, and complex problem solving. These happen to be the skills that the University of Winnipeg graduates like you are uniquely equipped with. As Minister Wishart said at the start of convocation, you've learned how to learn. 
Your professors have provided you the knowledge and tools to not only be resilient in the face of change, but to be the ones leading it. Part of what makes us anxious about disruption is a fear of the unknown, this feeling that an unseen force that will come out of nowhere will upset our lives. But disruption doesn't come out of nowhere. It starts with people, motivated people who are driven to challenge conventions and create different circumstances for themselves and others. People like Maria Campbell. It's unfortunate that you didn't get to hear from her, but please read her book, Half Breed. Read the stories about how the story ever got published. And imagine the time. Imagine her age. So 1973, in her early 30s. And I think you have to read it to understand what I have to say. Her narratives about her struggles as a young Métis woman brought to light the countless stories of Indigenous women suffering under systemic racism and sexism. Her courage to tell her story helped Canada confront uncomfortable truths about its treatment of Indigenous people. She did this all without waiting for change or disruption to happen to her. She shares how her grandmother taught her that fortune wouldn't simply fall on her. If she wanted to improve life for her community, she would need to find individuals like herself and together find alternatives. She would have to go out and find the world's need for her leadership. And that's what she did. She started with local support groups and eventually built a network of strong-willed activists through her research teachings and creative works. You too can be a force for positive change in your community. Every day, U of W graduates go out to work in diverse fields and locations, each with the potential to leave their mark on the world, big or small. We've got over 50,000 examples. I'm just gonna share three of them with you. I recently met a U Winnipeg graduate sitting at a round table for a government consultation on Manitoba's economy going forward. And I found out that he and Olive Pitlick, who's also a U Winnipeg grad, have a couple of companies. So one of them is DeCapo, and they run this recording studio that specializes in audio for film, TV commercials, and video game. And he has clients all over the world. But you also may be familiar that they have another business in town called Across the Board Cafe in the Exchange District, concept that brings people together over food and board games. So here they are disruptors who didn't just make opportunities and jobs for themselves. They are employers, they are local, they are global. They are both examples of how U Winnipeg graduates are having measurable impact at home and abroad. We read often of our science graduates. Here's one I want to tell you about, Dr. Alana Hellis. She's received international accolades for her research into neutron scattering, a process used to understand the properties of matter and how different types interact with one another. Her work's taken her from Scotland to Japan, and it all just started seven years ago, where she was a new chemistry graduate sitting right where you are now. And as you sit here today, you might not be able to see how you could possibly be in a position to open a popular business or make groundbreaking discoveries into new materials, and that's fine. Our desire and our capacity to learn, whether it's through formal education or just taking in life's lessons, doesn't end when we leave university. Mark Abitasawe is a great example of this. An Ojibwe from Ondek Omni Kainung First Nation in Ontario, he first came to the University of Winnipeg as a young person looking to pursue education. But he dropped out. It was too much of a change, too much culture shock to transition to the city. But he came back. A lot of our graduates do. He came, a lot of our students do. He came to the University of Winnipeg as a mature student and earned his physics degree, along with a degree in aerospace engineering from the University of Minnesota. Today, Mark is a structural analysis engineer at Boeing, one of the world's largest aerospace companies. Mark's path through life, or university, for that matter, wasn't direct one, and he didn't have all the answers at once. After returning to school in 2000, he often lacked the time and money to take more than one class a semester. There were even stretches when he couldn't take any classes at all. It took Mark 10 years to finish his degree here, but along the way he gained different research and class experiences as he got to know the professors better. It was the totality of these experiences that helped shape who Mark is today, not the time or place that each one happened. Clinton, Olaf, Alana, and Mark are not alone in finding success. A recent survey found, and parents listen, 96% of our graduates are employed, and that's higher than sort of the unemployment rate. So we get jobs just like Red River. You get jobs. 
And despite the lower cost of living, our graduates' earnings were on par with Ontario. And I, I don't want to make it sound like money is everything. You've listened to our valedictorian. We have students who care about equality. Uh, but it is helpful if you can take care of your family and pursue your interests. You are well positioned to go out and utilize your talents and discover the world's need for your leadership. And I can't wait to hear more of your stories. Now, uh, before I wrap up, I do want to acknowledge that whatever path you choose going forward, you won't be doing it alone. You have parents who love you, guardians and friends, many of whom we have honored to have with us today. They've played an important role in getting you to the support point. So as a show of thanks for those who have supported you so far, I'd like to invite you, the new graduates of the University of Winnipeg, to turn in whichever direction you prefer and join our community in showing your appreciation for this support. So I would also like to thank our Chief Marshal, Dr. Danny Blair, the climate change science guy, and the faculty marshals, Chief Usher, Lynn Jones, those members of staff who have volunteered as ushers, sign language interpreters, Kevin Klein and Lacey Kaler, Elder Frank Walker, members of the Winnipeg Police Pipe Band, and our new pian pianist, Alina Havriluk, this year would have been Barry Anderson's 60th year participating in our convocation ceremonies as the organist. Sadly, Barry passed away in 2017 before he could play his 60th convocation, but we are very happy to have Alina here with us, and we hope to see her for many more years to come. Thank you to the many members of staff who have helped to organize this event. And I also want to acknowledge, we have a couple of folks back here on the platform party that have attended more than 100 convocations. So I know Dr. John Bowman, I don't know how many, but it's more than 100. And I think Dr. Michael McIntyre, at least 100, right? So uh, why do they do this? They do this because they believe in uh, what we do here and they believe in you. So please join me in thanking them. And again, on behalf of all of us, the faculty of the University of Winnipeg, for placing students first and for embodying the pursuit of excellence to which we are all committed, I want to thank our distinguished chancellor, Mr. Robert Silver, for being such a wonderful supporter of the university. And finally, our thanks to the graduates for making us so proud, to all of our guests for joining us on this marvelous occasion. We wish you all the best in the next part of your life adventure and hope that you do keep in touch with the university. And following this ceremony, you will all be invited to a reception in honor of our graduates outside on Spence Street Commons. I'm assuming it's sunny, I could be wrong. Uh, you can meet your student there. And I would request that after the singing of the honor song and our national anthem, uh, you stay in your places until the academic procession and the platform party have retired. And then stay in the gym until the students have exited. So now I would ask you to please rise for an honor song by Allison, no, Frank, followed by the national anthem led by Colin Russell.